Hi, good day everyone. So we are now at the second topic of our chapter three, which is about the difference table. So last time we have discussed about the inductive and deductive reasoning. So we know that uh, inductive reasoning is a kind of reasoning wherein we start with a specific and ends with a conclusion. While deductive reasoning, we start with a conclusion or a general statement and ends with the specific examples. So now we are going to have uh, the discussion of the difference table. So last, uh, in the last video that you have viewed, we have examined the sequence. And it is measured as questions like, what is the next term given the first term? Or what is the next term given the first and second ter term? What formula or rule can be used to generate the terms? To answer these questions, we often construct a difference table, which shows the differences between successive terms of the sequence. Ano nga ba yung sinasabi natin difference table? So we know that difference is the result of subtracting two numbers. So paano nga ba tayo gumagawa ng difference table based on the sequence, given sequence that is presented to us? So for example, so the difference table of the sequence 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and so on, uh, I, I, you have known that three dots or ellipses uh, denotes that a sequence is infinite one. So we have a sequence 2, 5, 8, 11, 14. So the first difference or the difference between 5 and 2 is 3. So 5 minus 2 is 3, as well as 8 minus 5, 11 minus 8, and 14 minus 11. So each of the numbers in the second row, so we know that this is the second row, which is the first difference. Of the difference table is the difference between the two closest numbers just above it. Upper right number minus upper left number. The differences in the second row are called the first differences of the sequence. In this case, the first differences are all the same. So, makikita nyo naman, di ba? Lahat ng first differences ay equal sa 3. Thus, if we use the above difference table to predict the next number in the sequence, we predict na susunod sa number 14 is 17 by just adding 3. So, yun po yung next term. Kahit di, po, kahit di po nakasulat nun sa ating uh, given, which is yung the last number at is 14, we know that the differences between the two consecutive numbers is always a 3. So therefore, we can predict or we can conclude that uh, the next term after 14 is 17. Example number 2. Difference table of the sequence or difference table of the sequence 5, 14, 27, 44, and 65. So we have here the first differences. We just subtract 5 from 14, so we get 9. And 27 minus 14 is 13. So as you can see, the differences, or the first differences, differ from each other. Diba? Kanina, you have seen that the differences, we only have the common differences, which is 3 at the first differences. So these are the first differences, iba-iba yung kanilang differences. So, hinalap ulit natin yung second differences. So, we have 4, which is uh, a result of subtracting 9 from 13. And 17 minus 13 is 4 as well. And 21 minus 17 is 4 also. So, in this difference table, the first differences are not all the same. Ganit siya ko kanina. In such situation, it is often helpful to compute the successive differences of the first differences. Since hindi constant yung ating first differences, kailangan natin subtract pa yung mga first differences para makuha natin yung second differences. So the differences of the second differences are called the third differences and so on. Kapag hindi pa natin nakuha yung common differences, then uh, we go along with subtracting the differences from the other differences. So to predict the next term sequence, we often look for a pattern in a row for of differences. For instance, in the following difference table, and take note guys, and this kind of problem appeared in or is appearing in the civil service examination. So, hindi nyo agad nakikita yung pattern or yung pattern nga na sinasabi sa first differences pa lang. So, you need to find for a kung ano ba talaga yung pattern niya. So, meron tayo, in this uh, example number two, we found that the second differences is four. Para para sa po sila dyan. So, therefore, you can actually solve for the next term after 65. Now, to predict the next term of the sequence, we often look for a pattern in a row of differences. For instance, the, in the following difference table, the second differences are equal to 4. 
If the pattern continues, then four would be the next second differences or second difference. And we can extend the table to the right as shown. So, yan po. So, kanina, we have the first differences, 9, 13, 17, 21. And the second differences, para para po silang 4. So, therefore, if we work upward, kasi kanina, all the, yeah, we work upward, upward, katulad ng ginawa natin kanina, in order to determine or predict the next term or the next number. That is, we add 4 to the first difference, 21. Which is here. Pag inad natin na, or inagdaga natin 21, ng 4 yung 21, so we got 25. So we then add this difference, which is 25, to the fifth term, which is 65. To predict that 90 is the next term in the sequence, this process can be repeated to predict additional terms of the sequence. So para malaman natin na yung next term after 65, we just need to add. 25. So 65 plus 25 is 90. Okay. So yan po yung illustrative uh, figure of what we have solved as the sixth term or the next term after 65. We just add 25 or 25 uh, for at 65. We just add 25 at 65. Okay, so along with the activity that we will be having on the first topic, which is all about inductive and deductive reasoning, you are going to answer these uh, problems, which you are going to pass in our Google Classroom. Okay, so proceeding with, we have the introduction to policy problem solving strategy. So, paano nga ba tayo solve ng isang problem? May isang uh, mathematician or philosopher, I guess, na nagsabing, hindi man natin matatawag na problema isang problema kung hindi ito madali. Kung hindi tayo na siya challenge. Ay kung madali lang ito, kung hindi tayo na siya challenge, then that will, won't be a problem. So in the 70s, ano ba itong sinasabi natin polyas problem solving strategy? Paano ba, ano bang mga process ang involved? Kasi tayo, when, when we are solving problems, we have many ways to answer it. But uh, Paulia introduced to us how to solve problem solving or how to solve how to use his problem solving strategy. So in the 17th century, the mathematicians and philosopher René Descartes, who lived 1596 and died 1650, contributed to the fields of heuristics, which is the study of methods and rules of discovery and invention. He tried to develop a universal problem solving method. Although he did not achieve his goal, he did publish some of his ideas in rules for the direction of mind. And his better known work is called the, the La Methode. Another mathematician and philosopher, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, planned to write a book on heuristic titled Art of Invention, where he, no he wrote, nothing is more important than to see the sources of invention, which are, in my opinion, more interesting than the inventions themselves. Sabi niya dito, wala raw, uh, mas ma importante pa kaysa sa makita yung mga invention na sa tingin na mas na mas na nagkakaroon tayo ng interest than the inventions themselves yung like ba, ano yung mas di ba mas natut na katuwa na nagkakaroon tayo ng interest kung alam natin kung saan nagmula yung invention rather than yung invention na mismo yung final product na yun yung sabi ni Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz so just like the ano the cell phone Ang gusto nila sabihin dito ni Leibniz is mas, mag, mas naka-interest pa daw na makita yung component ng isang PC, ng computer, kumpara doon sa mismong, uh, mismong CPU. Diba? Mis Maganda yan eh. Yung, lala lang yung mga ano, if you have experience uh, assembling and disassembling the PC. Diba? Mas nakatuang tingnan yung mga parts ng CPU. Okay. So one of the foremost recent mathematicians to make a study of problem solving was George Polya, who lived 1887 and died 1985. So almost 100 years, 98 years, almost 100 years in the age of 100. He was born in Hungary and moved to the United States in 1940. He taught for a short time, period of time at Brown University before 
moving to Stanford University in 1942, and taught there until his retirement. He published ten books and a number of articles for mathematics journals. One of the books he published, the book entitled "How to Solve It," which, which was published during 1980, 1945, is one of his best known. It is better to solve a problem five different ways than to solve five problems one way. He said. Sabi niya mas maganda daw na isolve isang problem sa mas maraming paraan than to solve five problems yung mga problema sa isang paraan lang. Kasi dita, siguro dahil hindi natin dita nagkakaroon ng ibang paraan, what if the, the problem cannot be answered by that one way? So not all the problems can be solved in one way. So therefore, I don't understand why are there are teachers way back in college na yung problem lang nila, yung the way they solve the problem, yun lang yung kinoconsider na tama. So anyway, di ba minsan kapag nag- nagkakaroon tayo ng problem solving, uh, our teachers are asking for a complete solution. Baka kasi may kinopen nyo lang. And for us to know if you have a different solution to your problem other than the problem that he or she has presented. Okay, so meron pong four steps on polya, problem solving strategy. So ano-ano po yan? So the basic problem solving strategy that Walia advocated consisted of the following four steps. So we have UDCR. First, we have understand your problem, devise a plan, carry out the plan, and review the solution. So ano nga bang involved sa mga steps na ito? So Walia's four steps are descriptively simple. Napaka-simple lang. Bakit naging simple? Kasi if you're going to look or you're going to comprehend the steps of Polya, madali lang siya. Diba? To become a good problem solver, it helps examine each of these steps and determine what is involved. Pero sa, minsan kasi, we can solve problems by using shortcut. Yung tira, shortcut method. So step one, understand the problem. Siyempre, lahat naman tayo, hindi tayo nakasolve ng problem if we don't understand it. Paano natin masasolve yung problem kung hindi natin alam kung ano yung tinatanong? Kung hindi natin alam yung uh, mga given. So this part of Polya's four-step strategy is often overlooked. Kasi lalo na yung mga ano ha, yung mga magaling sa pag, pagsasolve ng problem, especially mathematics. Hindi na masyadong in-understand nyo. Pag nakita yung ganito yung format ng question, alam na nila yung nawawala. Kaya sabi na, it is often overlooked. Hindi siya masyadong nagagawa kasi we just focus on solving the problem right away. Hindi natin inaalam kung ano ba talaga yung mga yung hinahanap. Although alam natin kasi ganun yung format ng question, pero this is often overlooked sabi dito sa statement. You must have a clear understanding of the problem. To help you focus on understanding the problem, consider the following questions. Can you restate the problem in your own words? So kasi minsan, the way that the art teacher presented the problem, in math, most especially in mathematics, hindi natin siya kanyang sagot, hindi dahil hindi natin alam yung sagot. Rather, hindi natin alam kung paano i-translate ito into our own words. Okay, next. Can you determine what is known about these types of problem? O yan, sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na you should all, uh, you should try to determine the given and the problem. Di ba, ganun yun sa atin yung ano, high school tayo. If, nung nabutan nyo yun, our teacher is giving or allotting points for uh, writing the given in the problem. This, there are missing information that if known would allow you to solve the problem. May mga, inform, may mga missing information ba na makakatulong sa atin sa pag-solve ng problem? Kasi uh, not all of the problems uh, na given lahat ng given. So may ilang, ano, may ilang problem na you need to find first missing information para masagot mo yung main problem. Pero uh, uh, yung kadalasang mali ng estudyante, lalo na pag ano, multiple choice exam, makit, pag nagsasolve sila, hindi nila binabasa ulit yung problem pero may ano niya, may ano yun, may ano pa yun, sa ibang step pa yun ni Paul ya, na binaba, hindi nabasa yung ano, yung pinaka problem. Tawa yung process niya, pero nakita niya lang sa choices na gan, may ganun sagot sa ano, sa sinolve niya, yun na isasagot niya. Hindi niya na binasa yung uh, pinaka problem talaga. Basta nakita niya na yung sagot niya dun sa problem na yun ay yun ang lumabas, pero hindi pala yung hinahanap. Diba? X pala yung, uh, y pala yung hinahanap, X pala yung nasolve mo. May mga ganun problem, diba? Pero that falls under, ano, inisurus ko lang kasi, you know, if there are missing information that is known would allow to solve the problem. Kasi hindi lahat ng problem, nandyan lahat yung given. 
So it's very extraneous information that is not needed to solve the problem. May ilang problem na may pangulo. Sabihin, uh, the height of the flagpole is 190 centimeters. The width of the uh, court is six, ano, wait lang, six meters. And the length of the court is 10 meters. What is the area of the court? So may binigay siyang height ng flagpole, pero hindi natin need ang height ng flagpole para masolve yung area ng uh, court. So may mga ganong information na kailan natin Para saan to? Ano, diba? I know you have experienced that during your uh, high school or even elementary. Kasama sa given, kasama sa problem, pero we don't need that or hindi natin kailangan information na yan in order to solve the main problem. So ang tawag dun sa kanila ay extraneous information. Kaya from the word extra. Extra information hindi sila dapat talaga isasama sa pag-solve ng problem. So what is the goal? Itong goal natin sinasabi, this is the main problem. Yung, uh, what is, yung sinabi ko kanina, what is the area of the court? Kasi baka mamaya, yun nga, yung sabi sa inyo kanina na may nakuha nga kayong sagot na sa choices pero hindi talaga yung mismong tinatanong ng problem. So beware of the uh, format or the structure of the problem. Mamaya, okay yun, nasa right path kayo pero you don't know the goal. You forgot the goal. You forgot the goal. So hindi mo siya nasagot ng tama. Okay, next. Devise a plan. Ayun, alaman mo na, understand mo na yung problem. Nalaman mo na yung ano, yung mga given, yung mga hindi dapat isama sa pag-solve ng problem. Now, ano yung plano mo? So, successful problem solvers use a variety of techniques when they attempt to solve a problem. And here are some frequently used procedures. Make a list of the known information. So, gaya na sinabi ko ngayon, yun, understand. Nalaman mo na na, ah, given ito, i-list ako na. And make a list of information that is needed. Oh, yan. No information, lahat ng nandun sa, ano, sa problem, isusulat mo yun. Itilista mo. And syempre, sabi ko sa inyo, hindi lahat ng information sa problem ay kailangan natin. May mga problem kasi na may panggulong, ano, may panggulong information. Next, we make a diagram. Oh, we draw a diagram. Uh, ako ganito eh. If, especially if the problem will require you to solve it, uh, hindi naman gumagamit ng formula. Uh, pwede yung gumagamit ng formula, pero if you are going to draw a diagram kasi mas madali mo siyang ma-visualize yung paano i-solve yung problem. Make an organized list that shows all possibilities. So, ano yung mga possibility na pwede maging sagot mo? Dapat ba kapag ang area, da dapat mas, mata mas malaki doon sa dalawang ano kasi i-multiply yun. So, ibig sabihin, dapat mas malaki yung area kaysa doon sa width at sa, sa length. Unless, that is a one by one. Uh, one by one unit na ano na length at width. Okay, make an organized list that shows all you know possibilities. Make a table or a chart. Uh, this is effective when you are having the coordinates of so yung x and y. Yung pag uh, yung ginawa niyo na karaan, which is the mapping of the x and y variables. If the determine if the function if the relation is a function. Next, work backwards. May ma ganyan ako madalas mag-solve ng problem most especially if the given is at the last part of the problem. You need to really work backwards. Yan. Matuto kang lumingon sa iyong pinanggalingan charot. So, pabalik kang mag-solve ng problem kasi nakita mo yung given ay nasa likod. Pero you bago kasi mag-work backwards, gagawin mo lang yan kapag nabasa mo yung problem, nakita mo na hindi mo siya kaya so i-solve using uh, yung pagbaba, yung kung paano mo siya nabasa. But you need to work backwards. And try to solve a, a similar but simpler problem. Kung hindi mo siya kaya sagutan kasi may mga square root, why not try to answer it using ano, using whole numbers? Kasi minsan yung mga problem natin, yung fractions. Pag nakita tayo ng fraction, ayun na naman, matatakot na, hindi na alam, na, ano na agad, natatamad na agad mag-solve ng problem. Karamihan sa mga ano, Sa mga weakness ay mat fraction, hindi talaga ano sa fraction. Kapag nakita sila na hindi whole number, tinatamad na silang isolve yung problem. Pero try, yung sinasabi yung try to solve a similar but simpler problem. Kung fraction yung given sa problem, why not uh, have an example na whole number? In that way, malalam, maybe verify mo if the result is consistent. Kapag nakalimutan mo yung formula, yun. You may verify it using similar but simpler problem. And next, yung madalas na ginagawa natin, especially when we're dealing with figures, we look for a pattern. 
Also with the numbers yung kanina pinasan ko, that is actually looking for a pattern. Write an equation. If necessary, define what each variable represents. So yan. Ayaw. Ako kasi uh, most of the time, pero this is actually the, the right thing to do. If the value is not known, we write an equation, we express, or we denote any known variables or unknown variables into variables. Oh, yung using letter variables, which is X and Y. Next, perform an experiment. Baka tayo kailangan mag-perform ng experiment. One of the, the plan na binanggit dito is make an experiment. Kasi not all of the, yung trial and error method, di ba? Yan, that is actually an experiment. If this is, if this solution does not work, then we try another one. We try another experiment. And guess the solution and then check the results. Ah, minsan ganito yan eh. Um, pag multiple choice, pinasubstitute natin yung mga values sa ABCD. Oh, tama yun. Pero what if the question is a uh, multiple uh, matching type rather. Matching type. Ano yung matching type? Yung may ABCD, di ba? Hanggang J ata yun. So, paano kung gano'n itatry mo lahat? Tapos mag-ano ka? Mag matatagal lang ka kasi you don't know the ano, solution and then you guess up the correct answer na lang. You guess for the answer na lang. So, that is time, uh, timely. Like dito, uh, masyado siyang hindi siya, hindi siya efficient kasi hindi ka sure sa sagot mo, nasahin mo pa yung oras mo. So, try to guess a solution. Pwede natin mag-eliminate the possibility para makapag-guess tayo. Ay, itong ano, sabarang laki na. Kung er, ang, er, ang kanyang width at length ay mas ma ganito, ibig sabihin, hindi na to, hindi na, pwede maging area to. So, we try to eliminate the possibilities and we try to guess a solution that will come up for the right answer. Next, ayun, alam mo na gagawin, mag-look for a pattern, then carry out mo na yung plan. Once you have devised a plan, you must carry it on. And like, take note, class, that in step two, parami tayo yan, ito yung mga ways on how to, devise, uh, to solve the problem. Not all the problems will be solved using all of these plans or steps. Kaya we should be careful in how to execute the plan or to carry out the plan. So work carefully. You already know the known. You already know what step or solution or what method will you use to solve the problem. So you need to work carefully. Next, keep an accurate and neat record of all your attempts. Ah, mali ito. Pero kadalasan, di ba, minsan na-stuck tayo. Hindi natin, pag na-stuck tayo, na, na tayo na out of, oh, na out of mind, na, na out of uh, place na tayo sa ating ginagawa. Kasi we don't expect na mangyayari yung na-stuck tayo. So kapag ganon, na-stuck kayo sa problem, mag-drop na lang kayo. Charot. Pag na-stuck kayo sa problem, uh, balikan nyo yung ano, balikan nyo yung process nyo. Sana ko sa pinabalikan. <laughs> balikan mo yung process mo and then check step by step kung saan ka nagkamali. Yan. Ay, hindi pala. Sa review the solution yon Basta i-record mo lang lahat ng solution mo. Lahat ng mga inputs mo dun sa scratch mo. I-record mo. Kasi baka may ulitin mo. Ah, sagot ko ito mamaya. Nagawa ko na to Next, para pag binigyan ka ng second chance, alam mo nang gagawin. <laughs> Realize that some of your initial plans will not work and that you may have to devise another plan or modify your existing plan. Hmm. Hindi lahat ng uh, ways mo ay makakasol ng lahat ng problems. So you need to devise another plan or modify your existing plan. Kasi maya, dito ka pala nagkulang, doon ka nag-focus sa isa. Hindi pa. So ano yung sarugot yun ah? Then basta, uh, pag ganyan, uh, we should, kasi di ba, not all of the methods na ginagamit na sa pag-solve ay effective doon sa pag-solve na ibang problems na mas mahirap. So, yun. Please, kailangan mo i-accept yun na hindi lahat ng solution mo ay tama. And last step in problem solving is review the solution. So, once you have found the solution, check the solution. So, diba, if our teacher are giving us activity which will require us to have the solution, nagkakaroon tayo ng check the solution or checking. We substitute the value to the problem or the answer to the problem. Ensure that the solution is consistent with the facts of the problem. 
kasi baka mamaya hindi pala siya alam mo yun na yung solution pero hindi pala may butas pala yung ano mo yung solution mo so interpret the solution in the context of the problem at dahil ganito ang problem dapat ganito yung gagawin ko um, itong ginawa ko ay medyo mali kasi may isa pa palang given Okay, next, ask yourself whether there are generalizations of the solution that could apply to other problems. Okay, tanongin mo rin sarili mo kung yung mga generalization or yung hinuha mo or yung, yung naging, yun, hinuha sa mga sa solution na ginawa mo could be also be applied to other problems. Ay, nakita ko na tong problem na to. Ay, nakita ko na tong problem na to. So, next time around that it will be given, uh, same solution will be applied. Yeah. Okay, so with that, I will present to you the, some problems using Polya's four-step problem-solving strategy. Okay, so example number one, Carl Friedrich Gauss was a scientist and mathematician. He is known for having shown mathematical power, prowess as early as age three. It is reported that as soon as Gauss entered elementary school, school his teacher assigned the problem of finding the sum of the first 100 natural numbers. So ito si Goss, uh, as early as grade, uh, as early as age 3 rather, not grade 3, age of 3. Tinanong siya, sila lang teacher nila, kung ano ang sum ng first 100 natural numbers or yung first 100 counting numbers. Baka siya natural. Alam di ba, paano ba tayo magbilang? We start with 1. So yung uh, sum ng 1 to 100, Hindi na tayo nagsasak ng zero, di ba? Kaya siya natural number. So, Goss was able to determine the sum in a matter of few seconds. Kaya niyo yun? O kaya natin yun kasi may formula na ngayon. The following solution shows the thought, thought process he used. So, in step one, he understands the problem. The sum of the first natural numbers is represented by 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. So, next, we need to devise a plan. And then the first, uh, the first 100 natural numbers from left to right would be time consuming. Pero aminin nyo, pag nag add tayo, diba, if we uh, forget the formula, yung a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1d. So yung uh, formula. Pero wala pa noon. Anong ginawa ni Gus? He noticed that 2 and I, wait lang. Gus considered another method. He added 1 and 100 to produce 101. He noticed that 2 and 99 has a sum of 101. Pero hindi ko ito nagawa kasi ako din nakalimutan ko lang yung formula. Kaya ang ginawa ko, nag, ano ako, nung sa dulo-dulo. Yung 100, itinanggal ko. Tapos yung 1 at 99, pinagpares ko. Tapos uh, 98 at 2, pinagpares ko. 100, 100, 100. Ilang 100 yon. Ganun yung ginawa ko. Without knowing the formula. Pero matagal. Ay, wako, pares na kami niya. Pares na naman kami ng ginawa. Pero sa kanya, 101. Nahirapan kasi ako pag hindi exact yung number, mag-add. He noticed that 2 and 99 have a sum of 101 and that 3 and 98 have the sum of 101. Thus, the 100 numbers could be thought as 50 pairs with sum of 101. Pero sa kanya nagpares-pares siya. And maganda yun, which is ma-ano lang kasi siya. Madali siya kasi doon sa naisip ko na 100 yung una kasi may natira 50 tsaka 100. To find the sum of, yun na, carry out of plan na. To find the sum of 50 pairs, each with the sum of 101, Gauss multiply 50 to 101 and arrive at 50-50 or 5050-50 to like 5050 as a solution in the equation. 50 times 101 is equal to 5050. Next, review the solution. Because the address in the addition problems can be placed in any order without changing the sum, Gauss was confident that he has the correct solution. So, yun yung naging review the solution niya. Sabi niya, dahil yung mga pinag add sa addition problem can be placed in any order without changing sum. Kahit, ano, kahit mauna pang, mo pang ipag-add yung uh, 2 and yung 2 and 99 guys sa 1 and 100, hindi nagbabago yung sagot niya. So, he, he was then confident that he had the correct solution. So, ganyan ka ano si, ano, si Goss. Na, alam niya yung sagot, yung sum ng first 100 as early as age 3. O, anong alam niya gawin during that uh, age of 3. 
siya yan, na, na, na-add niya yan, which cannot be performed even by college students. Kasi hindi na kami mahilig sa math eh. Kasi siyempre siya, ano siya, gifted siya sa math. Well, you are, huwag niyo isipin na you are not gifted also just because you don't know mathematics very well. You do not have the guts to learn mathematics. Kasi may ilan, may mga gift kayo sa iba, uh, in other ways. Ito si Goss, gifted, siya sa, gifted siya sa math. And you try to discover those things from me. Kasi ako, I have, dif- uh, I have discovered many things from myself. With the help, of course, of my family. Okay, next. A hat and a jacket together cost 100 pesos. Yung sombrero raw at saka yung jacket, nagkakahalaga ng 100 pesos. The jacket cost 50, 90 pesos more than the hat. How much did the jacket and the hat cost? So after reading the problem for the first time, you may think that the jacket cost 90. Ah, uh, yun isipin niyo kasi sir given yung 90. Yung sombrero tig 10 piso yan. The sum of this cost is 100 pesos. But sabi dito, the cost of the jacket is only 80 pesos more than the cost of the hat. So we need to find two pesos amount that differ by 90 pesos and whose sum is 100 pesos. So, oh, you, that's how we understand the problem. So, hindi namin titihan. Okay, ulitin natin. The sum of this cost is 100 pesos. But the cost of the jacket is only 80 pesos more than the cost of the hat. Ibig sabihin, ano mas mahal? Siyempre jacket, sir. <laughs> jacket, siyempre. We need to find two peso amounts that differ by 90 pesos and whose sum is 100 pesos. Maghahanan na tayo ng dalawang numbers na kapag pinag-minus ang lalabas ay 90 pesos. Kasi sabi dito, jacket cost 90 pesos more than the hat. And whose sum, at yung sum niya ay 100 pesos kasi yung total cost niya ay 100. Ano kayong dalawang number na kapag uh, sinubtract 90, pa, uh, 90 pesos ang lamang at yung sum nila ay 100 pesos. So device a plan. So it is advised to identify first all the information, lahat ng given information, or the variables before writing an equation. Let J be the price of the jacket and H be the price of the hat. Sabi ko sa inyo kanina, if the value is unknown, then you can use variable X and Y. Or in this case, we used J and H. So J plus H is equal to 100. J equals H plus 90. So bakit naging ganun? So kasi dito yung jacket, sabi dito, yung una, yung unang ano natin ito, yung J plus H, ito yung sinasabi niya, a hat and a jacket together cost 100 pesos. Yan yung para dito sa J plus H. Ano yung J equals H plus 90? So more than the hat. So H or hat plus 90. Yun daw yung cost ng jacket. So kaya siya J equals H plus 90. And H is equals H. Siyempre yung cost ng hat ay equal sa cost ng hat. Then J plus H is equal to 100. And H plus 90 plus uh, H is equal to 100. We just substitute the value of J as H plus 90. So we have here, yung J dito, pinalitan ng iba. <laughs> pinalitan ng H plus 90. So write equation using H for the cost of the hat and H plus 90 for the cost of the jacket. In equation, H plus 90 plus H, or the quantity H plus 90 plus H is equal to 100. So, meron na tayong equation. We divide the plan. Ano ba gagamitin natin? Ayun. We represent the missing in terms of J and H. Kaya natin yung plan. May equation na tayo. May work equation na tayo. Then, we can solve for the value of H to solve for the uh, price also of the other variable, which is the cost of the jacket. So solve for H, so we have the quantity H plus 90 plus H is equal to 100. So adding like variables, so like terms, we have 2H plus 90 is equal to 100. So with the addition, addition property of equality, whatever you add on the left side should also be added on the right side. So para maiwan po yung 2H sa left, we need to add negative 90 on both sides. So therefore, cancel lang po yung 90. And we add negative 90 and subtract 90 from 100. So therefore, we have 2H equals 10. And the cost of the hat here is 5. So since we 
express h as the price of the hat so therefore the solved five here is the cost of the hat and the cost of the jacket five pesos which is 95 pesos so review the solution sabi natin kanina kailangan yung price nila mag add up into 100 so when we review the solution yeah 100 pesos yung 5 plus 95 and the cost of the jacket is 90 pesos more than the cost of the hat. Have we done? So this confirms that the hat costs 5 pesos and the jacket costs 95 pesos. Okay? That is how we perform the policy steps and problem solving in this problem. So I review nyo. Ayong kanina sinabi na pag pinag-add 100 kapag pinag-minus ay 90. So sila yung dalawa. Okay, again. Balikan natin. Ano yung tinatang sa problem? Yung price ng jacket and the hat. So baka may solve nyo lang yung hat. Hindi nyo lang solve yung jacket. Balikan sa problem. Jacket at yung presyo ng jacket at hat yung tinatanong. Okay. So moving on. So we have example number 3. Medyo madali ito. Medyo, na, medyo humabal lang kasi siya kasi pinalo natin yung uh, is policy steps in problem solving. Okay, next example. 2 times the sum of a number and 3 is equal to 2 thrice of the number plus 4. Find the number. So, dalawang beses uh, dalawang beses ng sum ng unknown number at 3 ay equal daw sa tatlong beses na uh, tatlong beses na unknown number plus 4. So, hindi namin tindihan. So, kaya we need to uh, solve this problem using polyas. Pero, the way I, ano, I know, I, the way I rephrase it, medyo magulo pa rin. So, how do, uh, how do we understand this problem? We need to make sure that we read the question carefully several times. Kasi hindi nyo man siya, di ba ako nga, pinarephrase siya, hindi, uh, hindi agad na tindihan. Tinagalo ko na siya, hindi ko pa rin tindihan. Since we are looking for a number, we will let x be the number. For x na naman. Yeah. Well, actually, we represent any unknown number. Kapag isa lang siya, represent that unknown number into x. Usually, kasi yan ang ginagamit na. Huwag lang kayong beater. Okay? Okay, devise a plan. Let x be the number. We will translate the problem mathematically. 2 times the sum of a number. Dalawang beses daw. Oh, 2 times the sum of a number. Sum ng number at 3. Oh, x plus 3. E, multiply mo sa 2. 2 times daw eh. So, we have... 2x, uh, 2 times the quantity x plus 3. And 3 is equal, uh, and 3 is equal to thrice, oh, wait lang, is, pala, is equal to thrice the number 3x, or thrice the number is 3x, plus 4, so plus 4. So we have now the equation, working equation. So we now, we are now going to carry the plan or solve the value of x. So we have 2 times the quantity x plus 3 equals 3x plus 4. And by distributive property of equality, we have 2x plus 6 equals 3x plus 4. And combining like terms, we have now 3x. So parang ano lang, dapat dito sa kabila yan. Pero to make, uh, to have the variable, to make the variable positive, Nilipat na natin siya dito. 3x minus 2x equals 6 minus 4. So, nilipat natin 2x sa kabila, maging negative 2x. Ilipat natin yung positive 4 sa kabila, maging minus 4. So, therefore, we have the solution or the answer x equals 2. Okay, the number is, ano ulit yung tanong? Okay, let x be, wait lang. Find the number. So, therefore, ito yung number. So, x equals 2. Okay, we need to review the solution. If we take 2 times the sum of 2 and 3, okay, sum ng 2 and 3 equals 5. Multiply by 2, 10. Okay? That is same as thrice the number 2. Okay, thrice the number 2. Thrice the number 2 is 6. Plus 4 is equal to 10. So, th this Thus, check. Thus, the number is 2. So, parehas na tayo yung sagot nila. So, therefore, tama yung sagot natin na x is equal to 
टू ओके सो अगेन वी हैव द असेसमेंट टाइम द थर्ड एक्टिविटी दैट यू विल बी हैविंग फॉर दिस फाइनल टर्म एनीवे आई विल बी गिविंग यू वन वीक टू डू दिस टास्क नेक्स्ट वीक यू वांट बी मीटिंग एनी मोर नेक्स्ट वीक इतना लंबा सी गैन आई विल बी पोसिंग इट दिस इन ऑर्गेनिक क्लासरूम फॉर यू टू बी एबल टू आंसर दिस विद योर ओन कॉपी Yeah, about lang po siya sa uh, five steps in problem solving. I, I guess I will be giving this as a group activity. Okay. So after this, uh, after next week, we'll be proceeding with the chapter four, which is the data management. Okay. That's all for this video. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. God bless.